Hi everyone, my name is Mark Lance. I'm a GED teacher here in New York City. I'm hoping these short math lessons will help you to pass the GED test so you can go on to college or to a better job. I've watched a lot of videos on this subject and some of them are great, but I think some of them just show how to solve math problems. And my philosophy is to look a little deeper to understand why we do something in a problem. I think that's more helpful. The last time, we talked about fractions, what they are. We talked about things such as reducing fractions, um, improper fractions, mixed numbers, and we did some problems. And you can review all these things in the previous tape. And they'll come up again as we uh, go forward. But for now, let's just dive in and start doing some problems. The first one I want to do is an addition problem. And we're going to be adding 3 eighths plus 1 eighth. Okay, now this is, if you got something like this on a test, you'd be really happy because it's easy to do because we're simply adding, since they already have a common denominator, they, both of these fractions have eighths as the denominator, we simply add up three eighths plus one eighth. Well, three plus one is always four, no matter what we're talking about. Three eighths plus one eighth. The denominator didn't change, we just add the numerators, okay? Just like three apples plus one apples is four apples, this is three eighths plus one eighths is four eighths. The only trick to this is, and this is, re, you can see that we talked about this in the last lesson, this is correct, but on many tests they will insist that fractions be reduced to lowest terms. So there's another name for 4 eighths that has the exact same value, which you probably already know. <clears throat> so you can see that there's a number that goes into both 4 and 8. 2 goes into both 4 and 8, but even bigger, 4 goes into both 4 and 8, so 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice, so the answer to this is 1 half, and that's probably the answer they're going to insist on, okay? So that one's easy. The next one I want to look at is 1 6 plus 5 6. And incidentally, at any point before, we, before I put the answer up here, you can always stop the uh, video and figure it out yourself and see if we agree. All right, so this is the same thing. We have a common de a de denominator is already the same for both of them. So we're simply going to add one of these to five of these, and that gives us 6, 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. Now what they're looking for here is don't leave this as your final answer. Remember we talked a lot of the last time that all fractions are division problems. So this says 6 divided by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 6, 6 is 1. The principle here to remember is that any number divided by the same number, divided by itself, is always going to be 1, no matter what it is. Okay, so far so good. Our next problem is going to be 8 ninths plus 5 ninths. Again, the denominator is already the same, so we don't have to worry about finding a different common denominator. We know the den answer is going to be some number of ninths, and we have 8 and 5 is 13 ninths. 8 plus 5 is always 13. This, as you re may remember, is a so-called improper fraction. I don't even like the term very much because it implies that there's something wrong with it. But 13 ninths is going to be more than 1 because 9 ninths would be 1 and this is 13 ninths. So this is true, but the test would probably specify that you change it to what's called a mixed number. Well, if 9 ninths is 1, and this is a division problem, this is saying 13 divided by 9. You could even write it this way. Remember, it's the numerator is always the one that's getting divided by the denominator. Don't get confused by which number is bigger and smaller. The numerator, the one on top, is always the one getting divided. So in this case, since 9 ninths is 1, we know the answer is going to be more than 1. We're about to see exactly what it is. 9 goes into 13 one time, and we do one because we want to see what's going to be left over. 1 times 9 is 9, and we have 4. Now here's something where I disagree with a lot of teacher, and I've asked all my students, we were all taught the same way, to just put R4. So then I always ask, for what? And it's for 
ninths. This problem is all about ninths. So that remainder is 4 ninths. So instead of writing R4, we more correctly could write 4 ninths. And that's what this is. 9 goes into 13 once for remainder, 4 ninths, and there's our answer. Okay, 1 and 4 ninths. So step by step, these problems are adding a little lesson each time that we need to know. All right, that brings us to, what's my next one? 7 twelfths. And this is a subtraction problem. Okay, so again, we know the answer is going to be some number of twelfths, and now we're just going to find out how many of them. Well, 7 take away 5 is 2, 2 twelfths. We're all set, except for one thing. This fraction can be reduced because there's a number that goes into both the numerator and the denominator. I'm pretty sure you can see that it's 2. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12, 6, and that's the answer they'd be looking for. Okay? All right. Moving right along. How about, what's my next one? One fourth plus two thirds. And this is where we have to pay attention a little bit. We can't just add them. And the reason is because they don't have the same denominators. So it'd be act like adding three apple, one apple and two app and two oranges apples and oranges, we, we would need some common number to describe those two, and it would be fruit. So we could say three pieces of fruit. We need a, a term that would describe both of these. And that's what a common denominator is. So what that means is we're trying to find some number that both four goes into and three goes into. And you might already know, just from thinking about your times tables, but if you don't, one way to get a common denominator is to multiply these two denominators. So 4 times 3 is 12, and it's true, 4 goes into 12, and 3 goes into 12. Doing that will always give you a common denominator, not necessarily the lowest common denominator, but in this case, it is the lowest common denominator. So that tells us that we're going to, these fractions both are going to be converted into some number of twelfths, okay? So, let's make a little more room here. The way I look at this now is I would say, well, so we know we want to turn that 4 into a 12, and how do we do that? Well, if we multiply it by 3, that'll give us 12. 3 times 4 is 12. And whatever we do on the bottom, whatever we do with the denominator, we're going to do on the top. Okay? 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 1 is 3. And 3 twelfths is, in fact, the same as 1 fourth. So we found a new name for 1 fourth using the denominator twelfths. Now we're going to do the same thing down here. What do we have to do to turn that, to turn that 3 into a 12 is multiply it by 4. Whatever, so 4 times 3 is 12, and we're going to do the same thing on top. 4 times 2 is 8. Okay? And now we do have a common denominator, so now we can simply add them, and we get 11 twelfths. That's the answer, and it can't be reduced. I just want to say one more thing about this. What gives us the right to do this? Well, if you think about it, these are both fractions. 3 over 3 is a fraction. 3 over 3 is a division problem. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we're multiplying 1 fourth by 1. It doesn't change the value, it just changed the name to a value that is the same value with a different name. Same over here. 4 over 4 is 1, so we're just multiplying this fraction by 1. That doesn't change anything. We're just giving it a new name. These two fractions equal each other, and these two each equal each other, and now we can add them, 11 twelfths. Okay? All right, moving right along. Our next one is 1 half plus 5 eighths. Okay, don't have a common denominator. We're going to need to find a, a number that both 8 goes into and 2 goes into. Let's see, what's the first one? Well, if we multiply 8 times 2 with 16, 2 goes into 16 and 8 goes into 16, but there's one lower than that, and that's 8 itself. 8 goes into 8, and 2 goes into 8. So we're going to make our common denominator 
eighths. We caught a break here because this is already five eighths, so we just put five eighths. This one up here, like we did before, what do you have to do to two to turn it into an eight? Multiply it by four. And whatever we do to the denominator, we're gonna do to the numerator. So we're multiplying it by one. Four times two is eight, four times one is four. And I think you'll agree that four eighths is the same as one half. And now we can add them. Four eighths and five eighths is nine eighths. Four plus five is always nine. And there we go, except some people object to the improper fraction and they want to change it to a mixed number. No problem. This is a division problem. Nine divided by eight. Eight goes into nine once. One left over. One what? One eighth. Okay? So I'd just like to talk about this for a minute because these two things equal each other and we can change them back and forth. An improper fraction can be changed to a mixed number if you just remember it's a division problem. This is the same as nine divided by eight. Eight goes into eight once, remainder one, one eighth, they're the same thing. Going back the other way, remember this one, if we're talking about eighths, this one is eight eighths. Eight eighths plus one more eighth is nine eighths. Back when I was in elementary school, Sister Mary Victor used to just say, multiply this times this and add this. Eight times one is eight and one is nine, nine eighths, okay? So I, to this day, this is many years later, I still call it the Sister Mary Victor way and it works. So as long as you remember that this is eight eighths. If it were, let's say two and one eighth, now this is the number two, the first one has eight eighths and the second one has another eight eighths. So that would be 16 eighths plus one more, 17 eighths. Sister Mary Victor way, two times eight is 16, plus one is 17, 17 eighths, okay? So it's very easy to convert these back and forth. Don't get concerned or intimidated. Just if you think about it, that this is a division problem, and if we're talking about eighths, there's eight eighths here, there's 16 eighths here, and that 16 comes from eight times two is 16. There we go, okay. What was that? One eighth plus five eighths. We're now gonna look at seven ninths minus one half. Now we're getting a few extra little problems here. Seven ninths minus one half, okay? And it's a subtraction problem. So we have to, first thing we gotta do is find a common denominator. Well, I can't think of any number that both two goes into and nine goes into before 18. So I think that's gonna be our common denominator. Nine times two is 18, that works. So the denominator is gonna be 18. This one, maybe you can recognize, half of 18 is nine. So nine eighteenths is the same as one half. If that didn't occur to you, you could say to yourself, what do I have to do to turn that two into an 18? Multiply it by nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times one is nine. Either way you get nine eighteenths, one half. Up here, what do you have to do to nine to turn it into 18? Times two. Two times nine is 18. Two times seven is 14. 14 eighteenths, nine eighteenths. Common denominator, 18. 14 minus nine is five. Can't be reduced. There's our answer. 5 18s. Okay. We'll do one more because this has everything in it. This one we're going to do two ways. So this one is 4 and 1 half minus 2 and 3 fourths. So this problem has all kinds of problems. <clears throat> Number one, we don't have a common denominator. We'll be able to take care of that. But the other thing that I can see is going to give us trouble is three-fourths by itself is bigger than one-half. So how are we going to take that away? You might be already aware of the term borrowing. So the first way we're going to do this is we're going to find our common denominator, and it looks like fourths will be it, because two goes into four and four goes into four. So this is going to be four and some number of fourths, sorry. And this is going to be two and three-fourths. It stays the same, okay? Well, 
I'm pretty sure you know or can easily figure out that one half is the same as two fourths. Okay. Now we're all good to go here. We have a common denominator. There's only one problem. How are we going to take three fourths away from two fourths? Okay. The first way I want to talk about this is by borrowing. So we can get some more fourths so that we can do our subtraction problem if we take one away from that four. If we take one away from that four, that turns it into a three, okay? But that one, when it's like making change. When we borrowed that one, we asked, could we have it in fourths? So he says, okay, I'll give you one and I'll give you four fourths. That's one, right? So he's giving you like four quarters. We already had two, so that gives us a total of six fourths, okay? It's an improper fraction, but it'll help us in this case. And here we have two and three fourths. Now we have common denominators, and now we can do our subtraction. Six fourths minus three fourths is three fourths, and three minus two is one and three fourths. There's our answer. Now, the other way I want to show you how to do it, some people don't like the borrowing, so all right, we don't have to. Let's go back to here and we'll say we're at four and two fourths minus two and three fourths. In other words, we're right at this step. Instead of doing the borrowing, we could do the Sister Mary Victor way and turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. This four, one, two, three, four, each of those numbers, one, two, three, and four, has four fourths in it. Four fourths in the first one, four fourths in the second one, four fourths in the third one, and four fourths in the fourth one. Or, Sister Mary Victor way, four times four is 16, plus two is 18 fourths. If we were to move backwards, 18 divided by four, it'd bring us back to four and two fourths. This one, same thing. Two times four is eight, plus three is 11 fourths. Okay, four times four is 16, plus two is 18, 18 fourths minus, two times four is eight, plus three is 11, 11 fourths. They're improper fractions, but now we can do our subtraction. 18 minus, the denominator is going to be fourths. 18 minus four is, what is 18 minus? Uh, minus 11, rather, um, is seven. Yes. Seven fourths. Only problem with that is it's an improper fraction. Seven divided by four is one. Four goes into seven once. Three left over. Same answer. One and three fourths. Which one is better? Whichever one you like. This is the borrowing method where we borrowed one from four, we, and we that one is four fourths. And here we switched them into common to uh, improper fractions, did our subtraction, and then switched it back to a mixed number. Okay. Let's do. Should we do one more? Okay. Same thing. And that one I propose six and one third minus three and three fourths. So we have common denominator issue and we have this fraction is bigger than that fraction. Okay, let's do the borrowing method first. First, our common denominator is gonna be either way, is gonna be, wh what do you think? Three and four, what's the first number you can think of that both three and four goes into 12? So this is going to be the same as 6 and some number of twelfths, and this is going to be minus 3 and some number of twelfths, okay? What do we have to do to that 3 to turn it into a 12? We multiplied it by 4 over 4. 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4. Just to check, 4 twelfths, it is the same as 1 third. Same thing down here, what do we have to do? We're going to multiply it by 3. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 3 is 9, there we go. So now it's going to be 6 and 4 twelfths minus 3 and 9 twelfths, okay? Common denominator, it's just that this is too big to take away from that. If we do the borrowing method, we we'll take away 1 from that 6, and that will give us 5. Since this problem is now about twelfths, that 1 that you borrowed is 12 twelfths, plus the 4 you already had, 16 twelfths, 3 and 9 twelfths, 
and now we're all set to go finally. Common denominators, we can do the subtraction. 16 minus 9 is 7 twelfths. 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay? If we go back to this step here, and you don't like the borrowing, the number is a little bit bigger, but shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. 6 times 12, right, this is 12, so here's six numbers, and each one of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, has 12 twelfths in it. 6 times 12 is 72, plus 4 is 76 twelfths. 3 times 12 is 36, plus 9 is 45 twelfths. Okay, do our subtraction. 76 minus 45, 6 minus 5 is 1, 7 minus 4 is 3. 31 twelfths. Last step is we have an improper fraction. 12 goes into 31 two times. 2 times 12 is 24. With a remainder of 7, it's the same answer. Okay? So that covers everything. These are the most difficult ones. Okay, now let's look at a word problem, a typical problem from a, a GED test. And this problem, by the way, came from the Kaplan uh, GED test prep book, and uh, that's where I got it from. So the problem says, to make the top of a dining room table, Craig glues a piece of oak that is 5 16 inch thick to a piece of pine that is 7 8 inch thick. What is the total thickness in inches of the tabletop? So even before you do anything, you're thinking to yourself, we want to know what is the total of this 5 16 board and a 7 8 inch board. So it's addition. Obviously the numbers that we're going to be using are 5 16 and that's going to be added to, literally added, glued together to 7 8 Okay? So all of those words boil down to this, those little things, and realizing that it's an addition problem, which I'm sure you do. Okay, we're familiar with this. We have two fractions. They don't have the same common denominator, but it looks like we got lucky here because what common denominator do you see? What do you think it's going to be? What number that both 8 goes into and 16 goes into? Think about that for a second. The answer is 16. So that's what I always call catching a break because we don't have to do anything with this one. 5 16 is, say, just 5 16. And this one is going to be some kind of, some number of 16. What do we have to do to that 8 to get turn it into a 16? Multiply it by 2. 8 times 2 is 16. And we're going to do the same thing on the top. We're going to multiply that by 2, and that gives us 14 16. All right, now we have the thickness of the boards, but both expressed in sixteenths of an inch. Well, 5 and 14 is 19. There we go, 19 sixteenths. And that is true, accurate, but it's an improper fraction, so we'll switch it. This one I bet you could do in your head. 16 goes into 19, obviously only one time. Three left over. 3 what's? 3 sixteenths. 1 and 3 sixteenths. There's our answer. Okay? Okay, here's another one. Carol will use the two bolts shown below to assemble a book cart. How much longer in inches is, it, is bolt A than bolt B? Forgive my artwork. These are supposed to represent bolts. So bolt A is 2 and 7 eighths inches long. Bolt B is 1 and 1 quarter inches long. Okay, so there's our numbers. Question is, how much longer? Now, how much longer sometimes fools people because it sounds like maybe adding. But we don't want to add them. We want to know how much longer. In other words, what is the difference in length? As soon as you hear the word difference, that's a big clue that this is subtraction. So here's our two numbers, and we're going to subtract them to find out what the difference is, and that'll be the answer to the problem. Okay, I didn't draw this very well. What was it? One and one-fourth, I think. Okay, now here the common denominator is gonna be eighths. Eight goes into eight, four goes into eight. So this stays the same. 
And some of these after a while, you're just going to know automatically that one fourth is the same as two eighths. Okay. If you did do it the way we've been talking about, you'd say to yourself, what do I have to do to four to turn it into eight? Multiply it by two. Two times four is eight. Two times one is two. After a while, you won't even do that. You're just going to say, come on, it's obvious one fourth is two eighths. That'll happen eventually. And now we can do our subtraction. Seven eighths minus two eighths. Seven minus two is five eighths. Two minus one is one. One and five eighths inches. There we go. Okay, here's another one. At a fabric store, Melissa sold eight and seven eighths yards of cloth to a customer. If the material was cut from a bolt of fabric containing 23 and one fourth yards, how many yards are left on the bolt? Well, first of all, the word bolt. We just did a problem with a bolt, like a mechanical bolt to hold a machine together. Bolt also refers to a long, long piece of cloth that the factory sells to the fabric store and that's to cut the pieces off. So don't be confused by the vocabulary. Okay, so we have a long piece of cloth, 23 and 1 fourth yards. Melissa Koss takes 8 and 7 eighths yards of it off. And after she takes that off, how many yards are left on the bolt? Okay, so we can see it's going to be a fraction problem. And the first question is, what are we going to do with these two fractions? Add or subtract? Well, she's literally subtracting 8 and 7 eighths yards from this long piece. So even though this number comes later in the problem, we're going to use it first because this is the bigger number that's going to get cut. So that is 23 and 1 fourth yards. And the piece she's cutting off is 8 and 7 eighths yards. So there's our problem. And you can see what the issues are here. Common denominator and 7 eighths is bigger than 1 fourth. Not a problem for us. Let's do the common denominator first. We got eight and four. I think we can stick with eighths because eight goes into eight and four goes into eight. So this is going to be eight, and this one doesn't change. Seven eighths stays the same as, as this. This is going to be 23 and some number of eighths. And again, this is a case where you may see it already. We're pretty familiar with quarters from money. Okay? So this is going to be some number of eighths. How many eighths is the same as one fourth? Two ways. Two ways does reduce to one fourth. Again, if you're not sure about that, what do we have to do to this four to turn it into an eight? Multiply it by two. And we do the same to the numerator, two ways. Okay, now we got a common denominator. The only problem now is seven eighths is bigger than two ways. This one I think we'll do just by the borrowing method. Who can we borrow from at 23? How much are we going to borrow? One. When we take away one from that, that makes it 22. That one that we borrowed, we're taking it in eighths. So one equals eight eighths, right? The one taken as eighths is going to be eight eighths, but we already had two eighths, so that gives us a total of 10 eighths. And now we're just going to subtract the other one. We got a common denominator, and now we can do the subtraction. 10 minus 7 is 3 eighths. 22 minus 8 is 14. 14 and 3 eighths. There we go. Answer is A. Okay. Our last one for today is going to be this problem, a recipe. A batch of salad dressing requires 1 and 2 thirds cups of olive oil one half cup of vinegar, and three-fourths cup of water. How many cups of salad dressing will this recipe produce? In other words, when you put all these ingredients together into a cup, how full is that cup going to be? Okay, so it's going to be addition. We were pretty sure that was going to be true because we have three numbers, so I don't think anyone's going to be tempted to do subtraction. So our numbers are going to be one and two-thirds, three-fourths, Uh, and someplace, a one-half. Order doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to add them together. Now, these numbers are pretty friendly, so I think you can, we can easily figure out what the common denominator is going to be. 
So let me see. What's the first number you see that 2, 4, and 3 goes into? What about 12? The way I got that is 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 goes into that. All right. So it's going to be 1 and some number of 12s, some number of 12s, and some number of 12s. I'll bet you know already, just from what we've been doing, that this is going to be 6 12s. Just in case, if you want to go over it, what do we have to do to turn that 2 into a 12? Multiply it by 6. 6 over 6, which is 1. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6. That one is 6 12s. 3 fourths, a lot of these fractions come up over and over again in the same problem. I think we already saw this, 3 fourths, but in case you forgot, what would you have to do to the 4? Multiply it by 3 over 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. There's your 3 quarters, okay? And this one, forget about the 1 for now, or I put it over here already. What do you have to do to 3? Multiply it by 4. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 and 8 twelfths. So now we got common denominators. All we got to do is add them up. So 8 and 9 is 17, and 6 is 23 twelfths. Denominator doesn't change. We only have one whole number, 1 and 23 twelfths. Okay? So now the 23 twelfths by itself is an improper fraction. So 12 goes into 23, 1, and. 11 twelfths left over. So 23 twelfths equals 1 and 11 twelfths. And we had that other 1 that was already there. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 11 twelfths. And there it is. Okay? So all it is is just an extra fraction, common denominator. Put them together. By the way, our common denominator is salad dressing all these different things, you put them together, and the common denominator is that's how much salad dressing we're going to have. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And if you're interested, maybe you'll be interested in a uh, book that I wrote, A Young Adult Mystery. It's called The Weber House. It's set in Maine. features two young girls um, who set out to solve a uh, centuries-old pirate's treasure, and it even includes some math which they need to solve the mystery. If you'd like to check it out, um, I hope you all enjoy it. Thanks.